about 12.30, 12 hours and 30 minutes into the second day of May. Uh, it's a Sunday, Christos and Esti. It is Asuka, or Passover. Uh, it's the Passover of the New Testament. The beginning of the New Testament. So, it's the fulfillment of the Old Testament, but the beginning of the New. So, we're off on a ride to uh, my parents' house. So my, uh, my brother and, and his family are going to be over there uh, shortly. I decided to ride a little early since it was nice out. Uh, there was raining earlier. going back to bed and decide to head out early. Uh, everything's done that needs to get done in terms of the gaming. So I've got about 12 hours. That takes me until midnight, but I won't be, I'll probably be back at my place around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the evening. So, uh, gives me plenty of time before I have the game again. the top speed that cars have in terms of uh, speed limit, I do have sufficient pickup uh, in the scooter that uh, is no issue starting at stoplights or turning. It's just a matter of control. If you do have a sense of control, then you're alright. If you don't have a sense of control, then you simply go slower until you do get that sense of control. Uh, Yeah, it's a matter of practice, you know, how you feel on the scooter. Uh, I know when I can to avoid to go around the uh, sewer grates because uh, the type of metal that's there, you, there's a loss of traction. So I understand that. I thought the ground was going to be wet. It's kind of wet at my place. Uh, but the ground here is fine. Up to a light and, 
and jamming your brakes on. If you can, cruise to the light as much as you can. Allow it to change. If you can. So it looks like we're going to have to stop. Sometimes you can make it to the light and there's no issue with it changing. It, 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 you're going slow enough that it changes. But this is, uh, that's okay as well. Uh, there are people here ready to walk. Uh, light is on the other side, the walking signal in the wind. Oh, here we go. First start this morning, when I got out to today, I just uh, coming off the driveway there. I had a bit of an issue with the uh, accelerator. Sometimes it doesn't engage properly, and uh, that's what was going on. But now it's okay, it seems to be fine. The scooter doesn't come with a manual, so you kind of have to figure out uh, everything on your own a bit at a time. And so, uh, there's always uh, that, that learning curve where there's not always something to, to learn. There's a dead squirrel or something in the middle of the road. <laughs> Tis the season for motorcycles. And that's, a, that's a, <laughs> the church. It's always tis the season. Uh, because there's always some form of festival going on or another. Uh, we have an, uh, this, this, this way, it's, it's, it's very Asian, if you will, because we have a very large family. The whole church is centered around the concept of the family. And this is the family of God. It's not centered around God Almighty. It's centered around God the family, God the Father. Then you have the mother of God, then you have uh, Christ as the brother. So you do have a you do have a full family here, and then of course you have your aunts and uncles and grand grandmothers and grandfathers. Those are all the saints and the in, in the uh, prophets. And rather than being like Kabbalah, where uh, you have divine revelation, where it's a single way relationship, where uh, you know God dictates to you, and you simply follow along like a, like a puppet, like a, you know, uh, someone possessed. Uh, the relationship is two ways. It's a two-way relationship. And so it's, it is what we would class consider to be a real relationship rather than something that is kind of, well, fictitious. Slowing down because I want to get to the corner properly in terms of the right speed, but it looks like I'm going to have to stop. And 
our new route has now become the standard route or route. Uh, Sunday, May 2nd. It is uh, Pasca Sunday, so if you still have nesting still, it's the ride home. I'm running home without headlights. But the headlights aren't so easy working. I got the tail light. I got the side lights. Sort of light me up and I'm going to wear them, but I don't have my headlights. But uh, it's bright enough uh, all the same. It's about uh, 10 o'clock in the evening, so 22 hours into the 2nd of May. We are on the road. The road is a little wet because it had been raining out. It's not raining out now, but uh, nonetheless, we do have to take a bit of extra caution because of the wetness. up on my vlogs. The vlogs in terms of their publishing are becoming more and more current within two weeks of the filming date, so uh, not bad at all. So I'm working to increase the uh, awareness of the videos, so sort of uh, publishing them to more places. I still have to catch up on that. But now that they're more current, current uh, And the thing is that what, what needs to be sort of cleared up is that these are notes. The vlogs are notes, the research notes. Oh, the light's back on again. For some reason it took a while for it to come back on, but it has to be a, it has to be a connection here someplace because as I'm bouncing around, that's when the lights are coming in and out. 
car. It has to be some some issue with the connection there. Connect, one of the connectors is, is, is loose or something like that. So now this is this scooter has been bounced around quite a bit, uh, just due to the nature of the roads. So. Now, for those of you who are interested in the scooter, like the scooter, my scooter is. You want to come on the other side? Dead throttle issue. Uh, no, what that is, what it's all about, I'm not necessarily too sure. There goes, there's the little light on and off again. So there is definitely an electrical issue in here. So, we'll see how things go. It might have to do with the moisture, it might have to do with the dampness. Uh, the actual reason is unknown. So, ride with caution. Okay, during the day it's not an issue because uh, I still have my, uh, my side lights. And well, I also for the night I have the side lights lighting up, and uh, the back light that for people to see me coming coming behind me, for cars behind me, that's independent of the system. So what I might have to do is might get a light, an LED light headlight that's independent of the system, and just stick it on the handlebars, and that way uh, I don't necessarily have to worry about it too much uh, in terms of uh, how it ends up working out. But anyways. Uh, we'll deal with and adjust these issues as they come. Doing about 35 kilometers an hour. So I feel comfortable right now. Anyway, it's a back to our conversation. Uh, with everything that's going on in terms of a lockdown and stuff like that. They're working on the next lockdown uh, for the United States and globally. It's going to be the UK virus variant first. Then after the UK variant, it's going to be the Indian variant. Where, where they seem to have been able to successfully get enough panic within the population that uh, questions, how do I know what I know? Am I some sort of particular genius? And the answer is no. This is simply all library science. I, I said it before, you'll see it in the vlog. I don't do much during the day. My entire existence is basically library science. And I say that because all experiences, including the observation, form uh, part of a library. And the li it's the library that you get your information from. How you organize, how you sort the library, that all matters. It's not simply a matter of, of, of getting out there and collecting a bunch of data. Getting out there and collecting a bunch of data, a bunch of information, is important for any library of science. Uh, the larger your collection, the more you'll end up seeing. But it, it depends on how you cross-reference things, how you index the library. And this is the same thing too with the index, the internet is one massive library. It's indexing that matters. Screw up your indexing, and it doesn't matter what you have out there, no one's going to see it. But the thing is, this is the, uh, a good part too, is so for, the, for, the, for those of you who want to, for those, of, those out there who want to hide information, uh, how do you hide information? Well, you put it in plain view. You don't have to encrypt it, you don't have to encode it or do anything like that. Because the, Oh, well, it's all in your system. And there's so much in there because it's not properly indexed. No one's going to see it. Well, very few people are going to see it. And so, there's not much to worry about. The problem is with, is with search engines like, like Google, which do these indexing, 
well, they have to adjust their algorithm. So, oh, we've got a new algorithm. Well, what are they doing? They're hiding information. They're bringing to the forefront information that they want seen and hiding information that they don't want seen. Your job as a researcher is basically to go in, uh, sort through all the material that's out there. And there's a ton of stuff out there. You could, you could spend several lifetimes doing this. Is there in, in these sort of hidden archives or unindexed un archives where a large chunk of your good information is? But it's not official. So don't look for anything within textbooks. An indication that there's something off is when you look at the history of textbooks. You know, go get a textbook from, uh, let's say, uh, 2020, go back to uh, 2010 to see what the difference between the two textbooks are. And you see, oh, we've upgraded information. Well, have you? Or have you hidden some information? Taken information out that could have been more important than what you put in. Just because something is new that doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. You have to make an independent assessment on it. Now, in textbooks, you don't get that, that, that luxury because the textbook, the textbook, the authors of the textbook, the publishers of the textbook, get the final edit. They're the ones who say what goes in the textbook or not. So what happens is that information in a textbook can be very easily hidden because it's adjusted. And this is this is the nature of the research, and this is why you know you talk about your conspiracy theorists like 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 Lionel LeBron, who doesn't consider himself to be because he, he considers himself to be above. He's an analyst, but unfortunately not. He's a theorist because he does do analysis, but he doesn't do it enough to sort of pull himself out of the sphere of conspiracy theory in terms of developing a good conclusion. But then again, if he did that, well. You wouldn't be around because so they're the ones who the ones who un actually understand are saying the least. They can, and the thing is, they have to point you in the right direction, tell you where the where the entry point to all this information. Like I tell you about talking about Dostoevsky. The only point in to understand what's going on today is Dostoevsky. But the problem is, is that with Dostoevsky that most of these weekend warriors who call themselves analysts or conspiracy theorists will never do is that it takes two years to read through just an introductory point to Dostoevsky. Uh, he, he, he writes a lot. He's got, his books are, are, are basically filled. They're long, large books. The two key ones are, well, that's Karamazov, and the second one is Crime and Punishment. Now, you also have to read as, as, as a in between the two, you read, read uh, Brothers Karamazov first, and then the second and third ones you read are Idiot and the Possessed. And then, then you go into Crime and Punishment. And what happens, these act as primers uh, for crime, crime and Punishment because the, the, the ideas presented in Brothers Karamazov are carried forward and sort of uh, dealt with in a more specific detail that we're more focused on in uh, The Idiot and The Possessed. And these are two different books. And this is why you can talk about, uh, about, about people being idiots and reference Dostoevsky because uh, it's his work. This is the work you're referencing. And then you go into Crime and Punishment. And what you'll see as you do this is you'll see everything that's going on today and because of this stuff, the, 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 the latest work uh, by Dostoevsky was around the 1880s. You'll see that a large chunk of what we're talking about today, you think it's topical, was already done in the 1800s. This is not new.
is his old hat. Common courtesy takes 20 to 30 seconds. <laughs> And even though I'm not going much faster, I'm going slower today. Uh, I'm still on the 13 minute mark. 13 minutes from, from, my, from when I started to uh, just about now. So it'll be 14 minutes. I'll be like, like a minute off the, uh, off the riding time. Uh, typical riding time between 12 and 13. I'll be 13 and 14 now. But not bad. I mean, what's one minute? 